guess I'll just start with Columbus. See, I have a real problem about all of this. I mean, see, to me, he was like a virus, a disease. But when I think about it, because I spent a lot of time uh, protesting, trying to figure out how to deal with this disease. But I think that we really need to put serious thought into understanding that we're dealing with a disease. You know, it's like there's this predator energy on this planet. And this predator energy feeds upon the essence of the spirit. Feeds upon the essence of the human being, the spirit. Now this predator energy can take fossil fuel and, and other resources out of the earth, turn it into fuel to run a machine system. But in order for there to be a need for that system, and in order for that system to work, they have to mine our minds to get at the essence of our spirit. And the same way the external mining takes place, it pollutes, we see now, people understand how it poisons the environment, the water, the air, pollution. The mining of the essence, the mining of the spirit, mining our minds, the pollution from that is all of the neurotic, distorted, insecure behavior patterns that we develop. That's the pollution. Because in order for this predatory system, this disease, to work, we must not be able to use our minds in a clear, coherent manner. Because if we use our minds in a clear, co coherent manner, we will not accept the unacceptable. But it's a disease, it lives and travels through the mind, through the generations. Earth is a living entity. It is not in man's destiny to destroy the earth. That's arrogance. What it, what it is man's destiny to do is destroy civilized man's ability to live with the earth. So we, we as human beings, if we, use, if we take responsibility for our lives and live our lives in a coherent manner, as coherent as we possibly can anyway, then we will have an influence into curing this disease. But this earth will not allow, the antibiotic will come <laughs> in a planetary sense. If it means open up the ozones and let it, let, it, let it wipe the civilized man out, then the earth will do that. The earth will continue on. See, maybe, maybe we should be developing our loyalty to this planet and this earth and our future, our descendants, more than we should be to governing political systems that have created all these problems. See, but now we have, most people are trying to find solutions to problems, but they're trying to do it within the confines of, the confined abstractions of democracy. And so if they're not willing to think objectively about our responsibilities towards our own descendants, then they will come up with no solutions. They will only perpetuate the enslavement and feeding. And it's not just the U.S., it's Western civilization, France, England, Germany, they're not, you know, they're not immune to this. They're just as, in their, in their technologic, civilized mindset, they're just as dangerous as the U.S. They're the parents of the, of the Americans. America's their child, so they cannot remove themselves from responsibility for the behavior of their child. So, so it's not just the U.S., everyone likes to point it at the U.S. You know, and that's what makes the other countries so dangerous, because they want to pretend it's not them. The United States isn't the only one that has enslaved its citizens as workers. You know, the United States isn't the only one that's feeding off of the mass of the people. And the United States didn't create the idea. 
in the end what allows this aggressive behavior to continue is the participation of the citizens of the democracies. You know, they'll turn around and they'll condemn the, the violence of their governments or other systems, but yet they, you know, they'll live off of the fruits of it. Power is something that emanates from us, from the human being. Human physical being, spirit. And power is about that spirit, about the being, and our relationship to the planet, to the earth, to the universe. This is where our real power connections are. We live in a time where we have been indoctrinated to believe that authority is power. So when we look externally and we see these, that, these ones that would feed off of us and control us, they have, they have defined power from, from the material perception, perception of the human, not of the being. So we look at economic systems as being power, but in reality, the, it, an economic system is basically a, a system of authority. And we look at military systems as being power, but in reality, that's another system of authority. Or religious systems, but these are systems of authority. But, it, it, but we have been programmed into believing that these things are power, and because we have really no influence in these things, no, no real accessibility to these things, and if we believe they have the power, then it doesn't say much for ourselves. So power really is about our relationship to life. The rains of purification, gently flooding. Memories fill my reason. Laughing shadows from yesterday, weeping to wash the spirit. Continue to struggle, resist. Be one with the purification rains. The words, creation's breath of love, reminders of power, committed service for the earth, a people oppressed by the insecurity of the technologic exploiter. The people, the rain, the earth, the wind, struggle together for a common liberty. I was listening to the voices of life chanting in unison, carry on the struggle. The generations surge together in resistance to meet the reality of power. Mother Earth embraces her children in natural beauty to last beyond oppressor's brutality. As the butterfly floats into life, we are the spirit of natural life, which is forever. The power of understanding, real connections to spirit, is meaning our resistance our struggle is not sacrifice lost. It is natural energy, properly used. Remember the people. Remember sky and earth. Remember the people have always struggled to live in harmony, in peace. Struggle against selfishness and weakness so the people may live as nations. The old ways are hard. The people have always had to work together. Remember, impatient one. Remember and live. Do not be afraid of truth. Respect, discipline. Share your life so the people may live. Honor sky and earth. Honor yourself. Honor your relations. Remember, impatient one, the gentleness of time. Grandmother Moon, we love you. We pray for you, for us, and for the invader who just can't comprehend respect, love, or the balance of life. We do not join the invading madness. From the way they act, it speaks of spirit sadness. Machine money progress is the cause of our common abuse. We see you, grandmother. We feel you. We love you. We know through your reality we will endure. We are one. We pray for you. We pray too. Grandfathers whispering in the wind, rejoice at the life you are a part of. 
natural energy bound to natural laws. You will survive this temporary madness imposed upon you. Natural life is longer than oppressors' illusionary insanity. Spirits experience human deeds but need not end. This is just one place of changes. Spirit life is forever if you want. The universe is your home. You can survive here. Do not let them kill you. Keep your spirit strong. For distant stars and distant drums are the memories of spirit infancy. Children of Earth, let the spirit live so you can grow in your place in the universe. Yeah.